you're coming in at the bottom and just trying to scoop up the bottom of the barrel like a bunch of bottom feeders. I'm telling you, you all got to tighten up. And if you don't tighten up, I'm going to tighten it up for you. I'm telling you, don't ever come back to my court. I've been reading all the comments and stuff. Um, 1,600 lawsuits filed in four days. What's the story? I believe it was Zuckerberg that said, change is always met with resistance. Today I have a pretty spicy story for you guys. The story is between federal judge James Kane and McKinley and Mosley law firm. A couple months ago, we did a, our famous debate in Dallas, Texas between Chad Wilson and Steve Badger. In that debate, we have a lot of questions on the stage. People in the audience were engaging and one of them were representing McKinley and Mosley law firm. Also, during the debate, some people speculated that Steve Badger was talking about McKinley. He did not like them or making comments about them. It was kind of in the air. A lot of people were accusing him, if you will, to talk about them, but not naming them. He was trying to be politically correct. But what I'm here to tell you guys is in our industry, storm restoration, roofing, contracting in general, everybody has to play by the rules. Oftentimes we attack insurance companies for wrongdoings and sometimes even lawyers for malpractice and for not being honest with the consumers and for breaking law even. Well, we cannot change the system if we're not playing by the rules. Everybody have to follow the rules. Everyone have to do their best and you cannot fight evil with evil. If insurance companies are doing something bad, you cannot be a bad player yourself. In order to fight the good fight, you have to be the good guy. So the question I ask you today, when we look at this story, look at all sides. We're not trying to attack McKinley and Mosley. We're not saying who is right, who is wrong. I wanna read you statements that federal judge made and you comment below if it makes sense, if you agree with him or you think he crossed the line. There are about 50 pages in the transcript of that court and they're pretty bold. I have to give this judge a credit. He brings freshness to the case. He brings something that I personally admire and he is my role model because he is not afraid to call it how it is and you will see it in a second. Here's just a few of his comments. You have wasted judicial resources having to deal with your mess because you didn't do your job on the front end. The back end story is McKinsey and Mosley files 1600 hurricane lawsuits in just four days. And that's what kind of started all of this because how fast they filed and how prepared those cases were. And this is what this judge goes on a rant, literally schooling them in court. So I'm really here to try to help you guys learn. This is not the way to do business. This is not the way to practice law. When it comes from federal judge, this is a very bold statement. So you may go try to pull this stunt in Florida because I've already seen your advertisements. Shame on you. Shame on you for trying to prey on people. I'm telling you, you all got to tighten up. And if you don't tighten up, I'm going to tighten it up for you. I, can, I cannot imagine how much pressure it puts on this company. But to be honest with you, a lot of legal firms in this country, especially in Florida, deserve this treatment. I know personally quite a few big players, storm chasers, who absolutely abuse the system and when we do the coverage what's happening in florida we always say that all parties are guilty insurance companies are pretty bad but legal firms who go after them have to be reasonable as well and when you do what mckinsley does it might backfire on you this one I need your guys' opinion on because this judge goes on talking about how much they're charging. And again, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know how ethical it is. I love capitalism. I don't like when people tell me how much money to make, but I think he's reasonable as well. And we have to hear him out. He's saying that 
you are not charging 40 percent that's a ridiculous fee i practice law for 30 years and i only charge 40 percent in two types of cases he said medical malpractice and products liability that was it i think most lawyers in this community are charging 25 percent if the case settles but if you're settling this pre-suit like this there is no way in a hurricane situation you should charge people 40 percent that's a highway robbery and i'm not going to allow it comment below if you guys agree with it now one thing i do want to state here i want to go on a record that 40 percent number robs me the wrong way because i know that insurance companies shorting their claims by about 30 40 percent on average so if federal judge is so bold telling legal firm that they cannot get away charging 40 percent on hurricane claims i want to hear same federal judge to admit that insurance companies commit fraud when they shorten their claims by 40 percent as well that's my only remark on this but Comment below if you think that judge is in his place, if he has authority to tell legal firm how much to charge. Again, I don't know that space. I don't know how lawyers structure their fees, but I agree that 40% does sound like a lot. I mean, if you're the contractor and you have to work with the 60% of the claim, that's brutal. I mean, you've been robbed by insurance company. Now you've been robbed by lawyers. That's just my opinion. 40 is definitely on a higher end, but do you think federal judge can tell lawyers that they're charging too much? This is an interesting comment uh, about Facebook. I saw somebody sent me the video of a Facebook page from some company called Disaster Solutions. I don't know if you're in it, but if you're in it, did not appreciate your cavalier comments in that video about my court we broke the system we filed we set a record to me you are not doing the profession of practicing law any favors not doing yourself any favors popping out on facebook about how you are doing it it doesn't look good <laughs> this is this is just pure gold to be honest with you next gold comment and the way it appears on the surface you're coming in at the bottom and just trying to scoop up the bottom of the barrel like a bunch of bottom feeders i'm going to be honest with you that's the way it looks you can take issue with it i'm not saying that i'm just telling you you're the way it looks on the service it doesn't look good because it's sloppy so pretty much this judge is schooling this legal firm and telling them hey do uh this is how you look now my comment on it is i do see the trend in the industry where a lot of lawyers like young guys uh, playing big shots and I'm not even talking about McKinley now but we have seen this trend I, I've dealt with quite a few lawyers who coming in into the space uh, because the money is there you know you can go after insurance companies you can settle them and the same goes with the public adjusters and never forget how you look how you present yourself and what the perception is just because you bought a nice suit does not make you a big deal. What you do and how you do it truly matters. And I guess that's what he's trying to say here. Next one is very harsh. I'm telling you, don't ever come back to my court. God forbid we ever have another hurricane, but I do not ever want to see this again. Hear me. Tell your partners in Houston, stay the freak out of my court with this kind of trash. This is harsh. Let me tell you, if you ever call my chambers again and tell them you can't show up for a hearing Marshall Gallo, she is your Uber. She will be coming to New Orleans and dragging you out of whatever you are in driving you over here. It'll be the worst Uber ride of your life probably. Don't ever do that again. Listen, just hear me now. If you think you're going to play games, you play them but just remember one very important thing i make the rules okay so go forth clean this mess up again i reached out to mckinley and mosley here's what they had to say i've been reading all the comments and stuff um 1600 lawsuits filed in four days what's the story 
So Hurricane Laura, you know, made landfall in Louisiana in 2020. Um, it was one of the most devastating, strongest hurricanes ever make landfall. If that would have hit Houston or Miami, you know, it would have killed thousands and thousands of people. It was that strong of a hurricane. And uh, our firm really stepped up to help these people out. And um, I think we have something like 15,000 clients right now in Louisiana. And we're helping rebuild the state. And, uh, you know, a small percentage or, you know, around 1,600, maybe 1,800 of those claimants are from Hurricane Laura. And so the statute of limitations ran and, you know, we hadn't got money from the carriers. We hadn't got settlements done with the carriers yet. So we were forced to file lawsuits uh, on some of these claims. Well, all I read was uh, statements from the judge and they were pretty brutal, like pretty brutal. Like, why was he so aggressive towards you guys? Because the stuff yeah. he said was like, it's not going to fly. I never want to see you in court. <laughs> like, I mean, you d usually don't hear that from judges. What transpired? What went wrong? Yeah. So you got to understand, uh, Judge Kane is a great judge. I mean, he is for the people of Louisiana. Uh, his order reflects how he feels in his heart. He wants to protect the people of Louisiana. Uh, unfortunately, there were some rumors swirling that our firm was engaging in global settlements. Uh, for those of y'all that don't know what global settlements are, that's where you take 10, 20, 30 claimants at a time and you go to the insurance company and you say, uh, I want 50,000 for every single client. And you know, you can't do that. That's not fair to the client. They're not getting the individual attention they need. You know, what if one claim is worth 25,000 and another is worth 75,000? You can't just say, I'll take 50 on both because then the person that had a $75,000 claim isn't treated fairly. So we had to explain to the judge that, you know, look, Your Honor, we're not doing global settlements. We're actually putting in the time and the energy to mediate these on an individual basis. But because of the millions of dollars we've invested in technology and AI, I can mediate 100 individual cases a day. My team could actually probably do 500 a day uh, if we were allowed to. But that's because we put in the work, we put in the time, and more importantly, we've built the processes to do that. What's your answer to 40 percent? um rate being too high like in his words he said like other companies charging 25 and you guys charging 40 and you're not gonna get it under his watch how do you answer to that um judges are there to interpret law so whatever the judge says go uh in my eyes um you know some jurisdictions allow 50 percent contracts some allow you to go over 50 percent uh, I'm not here to say whether that's right or wrong, but we will always do what a judge tells us to do. Okay, so what's the verdict right now? What's the action? What's the next few steps? How how the whole thing affected you already and um, how are you going to change moving forward? Yeah, so out of the, uh, let's call it 1,700 uh, cases that were in front of Judge Kane, he ordered us to produce uh, the retainer agreement, so the contract we have with the insured, on every single one of those individuals. And we did that. We printed out the paper copies, we alphabetized them, and then we dropped them off at his office. He also made us run a report on certain cases. If we duplicatively, duplicatively filed them, that means if we filed a lawsuit twice, uh, he made us run a report to say, hey, if you've already settled this case and you filed a lawsuit, um, to go ahead and let him know about that. And what we did is we found 98 instances that might have found or you know fallen under his definition. Uh, of that 98, 80 of those were lawsuits that we purposefully filed again because we had originally filed them as one lawsuit. So 80 plaintiffs in one lawsuit. And the judge dismissed that lawsuit. Um, we thought since he dismissed it, we needed to refile each of those 80 cases again. He administratively, though, did that on his own. So that's why those 80 were there. Uh, 13 of those cases were cases that we intentionally double filed as well, because when we were running uh, or when we were filing the cases, I should say, uh, we got error notices on the, the website where you file lawsuits. And so 
to you know be precautionary on our client's behalf we said well we don't know if that was filed or not because we got an error we have to file them again we actually spent the money and paid to file those lawsuits again and then uh so that's 93. so of the 98 that we found fit his definition 93 of them were those two instances the five that were remaining were the five that fell outside of his geographical location uh, these are cases where we said, hey, so-and-so uh, claim owner, uh, the weather maps from Hail Trace show that you probably had a Hurricane Ida claim instead of a Hurricane Laura claim, but the clients were adamant that these claims were from Hurricane Laura instead of Hurricane Ida, and they instructed us to file Hurricane Laura lawsuits. So that's what we did. Um, as you probably are aware, I as an attorney don't have the right to file a lawsuit on behalf of my client. It's the client that tells me to do that, and I have to do what the client says. So out of the 98 cases that we were supposed to be sanctioned for, we had 98 very reasonable reasons why those lawsuits were filed. Um, we wrote a letter to the judge. We explained all of this. We're waiting for his response, but we're confident he'll see our logic and our reason. Um, but really, improving uh, our processes, your question on how to go forward is we don't want to file lawsuits. We don't want to do that. We don't want to tie up the court's time and messing with this. We want to be proactive in reaching out to insurance companies and we want to help them resolve these claims. What's the main reason for denials right now? Because the, with the damage being so bad, I mean, what are the, I guess, arguments for insurance companies not to pay them? Yeah, so insurance companies are can be in a tough spot, um, especially in Louisiana. There's so many storms that sometimes it's hard to tell, oh, is this damage from this storm or is it from that storm? Or they say, look, you know, we just don't have the money to pay out this minor damage. You as a contractor, or me as a, a roofer's attorney might think, hey, this damage is, you know, total. This roof needs to be replaced, it needs new decking, you know, drip edge, everything. And the insurance company, they've just set boundaries where they say, no, we can't do that. So it's really about mending the gap and getting both sides at the table and saying, hey, look, guys, this is damage and this needs to be paid for. And unfortunately, um, there's training on both sides, you know, the, the property owner representatives and the insurance company representatives that just aren't well trained enough to see what needs to be paid for and what doesn't. So oftentimes it's my job, it's defense counsel's jobs to go to that table and say, hey, look guys, we have to come to an agreement. Uh, how many claims did you settle? So you brought 1600, how many cases were settled outside of that number? So how long you've been in uh, Louisiana and how many you actually already like completed and done? Yeah, so in Louisiana, we've been uh, heavily active in the residential market for a little over a year. Uh, I think we've resolved over 3,000 claims. We have probably another 3,000 that we'll resolve, you know, in the next three to six months. But um, our goal is to help 50,000 people in Louisiana. 50, we want to help rebuild Louisiana. That's our goal. Louisiana got hit with four hurricanes in a 15 month period. They need help. They need people fighting for them. I wanted to, <laughs> to hear your side, what transpired, why, so bold i mean the statements were so aggressive i would call them and you know he was schooling you in a sense of course i wasn't there like i, I don't know if there's something led to it if there's something behind the story or, or led to it because i've been in courts many times and usually judges don't act like that they don't tell you know lawyers like hey you're not going to come to this court with this and the way I read it, it was almost like a threat because he was talking about Florida contact and other people like, you know, he, he went above and beyond with his message. And I'm like, what really happened? I wanted to know. I believe it was Zuckerberg that said change is always met with resistance. My firm is doing things that have never been done in quantities that have never been done. We are helping more people than have ever been helped by a plaintiff's attorney in the history of storm. What if I wasn't there? What would those people have done if there was no one fighting for them? If they had never hired an attorney, never hired a public adjuster, never got with a good contractor, where would they be? And that's the message that we ended the conversation with, with Judge Kane. And I think he took it very well. It was at the very end of the transcript. I'm sure you've read it. 
but that's really the message we want to send home. What if those clients never got representation and not just from my law firm, but any law, what would they have done? What, what would they have been left with? Got it. All right, man. Thanks for sharing. Good luck with All everything right. guys. So that's the story today. Whoever you are in the roofing industry, please be the good guy. Whatever you practice on whatever side you are, if you're a public adjuster, if you're engineered, if you're the contractor, if you're insurance adjuster, if you're public adjuster, if you're independent, if you work for letter assist, it does not matter. We all should take care of the customers. We all should do what's better for others, not for ourselves. Be professional, be a good guy. That's the only way to change the industry. Have a high standard. And if someone calls you out, you have to repent, you have to change, you have to admit your mistakes. Now, I promised you, I'm not gonna take sides on this story. You know, part of me wants to side with the judge how honest, brutal, and straightforward he was, but I also feel bad for the law firm. I don't know what went wrong there. I don't know the full backstory. I know that in Louisiana, there are a lot of bad players. Maybe they got a little bit too much of the heat from the court system, maybe for a reason, but I know few firms doing you know billions of dollars over there. I don't believe that they're the only ones who is you know, doing and practicing this. So I don't know the full story, but I wanted to share with you what's happening in the courtrooms after these hurricanes. I don't think it's all influenced by insurance companies. I would like to have this type of heat on insurance companies, but here at Roofing Insights, we say it how it is. I'm not gonna be only sharing bad stories and negative stories about hurricane damage and how insurance companies not approving their claims. When I see other players doing something maybe questionable, we're gonna talk about that as well. And that's the only way we can improve the industry and make everyone's accountable. Comment below what you think. If you like our mission, support us on Patreon, and I'll see you guys in the next video.